Hi everybody, this is Scott Sad. It's been a while since my last clip. I've been away for uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, as some of you know who follow me, uh, I've taken a family vacation uh, to Portugal. Fantastic trip. Portugal is a beautiful country, gorgeous beaches, gorgeous weather, lovely people, good food. Then came back uh, for a short uh, period back to Montreal and then headed off. Uh, my book, The Sad Truth About Happiness, was released uh, a month ago now. And the first place I had stopped off was at uh, Joe Rogan's show uh, in Austin. Uh, had a great time with Joe, as always. And then headed off to New York. Did some media engagements there, including, uh, I think it was my third appearance on Greg Gutfeld's show. Then came back to Montreal uh, for a, a bit of time and then headed back to California, where I was invited to speak at the Commonwealth Club, which is a really beautiful venue. Uh, this is in San Francisco. And actually, I I was expecting to see a real... Uh, you know, dystopia in San Francisco, which I actually, I had thought that the last time that I was in the area, I think it was in 2018, I was speaking at the Association for uh, Psychological Science, APS, in 2018, I think. And at, the, at that time, maybe the hotel was in a slightly more uh, seedy part, I'm not sure, but I had seen a lot more homeless people and so on. Whereas this time around, uh, I didn't quite see as much. I went with the whole family. Then I also had some engagements in uh, Southern California. I did the Adam Carolla show. Adam is such an affable, lovely guy. I did Tom Bilyeu, uh show, which is not aired yet. Uh, he, he, he hosts the show from his truly beautiful home. He has an incredible setup. We had a really, really deep conversation, maybe two and a half hours long. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Did a whole bunch of other shows remotely. I did uh, the Babylon B. I I did uh, their show in uh, uh, on location. Uh, that was really fun. And actually, there was a, a really interesting thing that happened at the end of the... When the gentleman, one of the, the two co-hosts, uh, invited me back. Not invited me, drove me back from... Uh, uh, their location back to Newport Beach where my family and I were staying. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but they're a, a Christian outfit, quite uh, committed, uh, you know, quite religious Christians. And uh, on the way there, and to some extent on the way back, my co-host, you know, we'd, 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 we were discussing religion, and he was quoting all sorts of scriptures. And I was kind of joking about that at one point when we were heading back to Newport Beach, I said, well, let me, you know, let me do some stretches because I need to prepare for round two of, uh, you know, the scriptures that are going to come my way. Uh, but it was all done, you know, in a very nice way. And then at the end of the day, as as we pulled up to our condo in Newport Beach, uh, he said, uh, do you mind if I pray for you or something like something to that effect? And so he kind of put his hand on my, um, uh, you know, on me and then did this, you know, ad lib, beautiful prayer, which was really, really touching. As you guys know, I'm not particularly religious, although I really do appreciate uh, many of the reflexes that uh, come with having uh, faith. Of course, faith can make you do horrible things. It can cause us to be tribal. It can cause us to hate those who don't share our faith. So it's not as though religion is always rosy. But here was an instance where... It was just a really, really beautiful, touching moment, um, and and I, I truly was touched by it. Even though you know, I I'd, I'd I don't think I'd ever had someone, you know, put their hand on me and uh, you know start praying. It was, but it was a very, very beautiful prayer, with a lot of uh, affection and, and and truly profound sentiments. So I really appreciate it. So why am I sharing this? Because you know, it's it speaks to one of the points that I discuss in in this book and the sad truth about happiness. That, you know, you have to be open to the world. You have to, uh, you know, life is truly a playground. Not just in the most obvious sense of, you know, have a playful mindset. But there are so many incredible opportunities to meet all sorts of incredible people. And, and connect with people that you otherwise might think that you don't have things in common with. 
Uh, and so just get out there, uh, have fun, be open, be curious, be engaged. And not that I wish to bring this up again, don't be like the many, many people who listen to my very innocent quip on Joe Rogan, where I was making fun of various accents, including the Portuguese accent, the Hebrew accent, and then the French Canadian accent. And it led to hundreds of hate mails, death threats, insults, racist insults, Arabic insults, anti-Semitic insults, calls to have me fired because I was joking about the French Canadian accent being unattractive. That's not a prescription to live a happy life. Uh, it's not a way to conduct yourself with honor and dignity. Uh, imagine if, you know, uh, I had been weak enough to completely capitulate to all that pressure. Think of the gentleman who recently in Toronto, I think, principal who, because he had the diversity, inclusion, equity mob come after him, ended up committing suicide. I think it was a 60-year-old man. He just couldn't handle the, the 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 tsunami of pressure he was getting. And I'm sure whatever he got was probably infinitesimally smaller than what I got. I mean, you know, I, I went into a store today and the gentleman said, oh my God, it's not right what they did to you. It's not right what your university put out as a statement instead of supporting you. And then my neighbor has a kid who's my son's age. The kid asked my son, oh, what happened with your dad about, you know, the, the joke he made? What was that all about? And so on. And so, you know, it's, it's made the news everywhere here, which itself is a sad story uh, when someone makes a, a joke about an accent and it can so inflame people's passions in such a negative way. That's not really how you want to live life. Now, in my case, I'm fortunate enough that I have a strong personhood that while it was bewildering to see this and it was frustrating and it, it angered me, uh, I wasn't going to jump off a building. I wasn't going to commit suicide because, you know, a bunch of humorless fascists were going to come after me. But again, it shows you that that's not the prescription to live a good life. People might like Thai food or they hate Thai food. And if they say it, that doesn't make them anti-Thai. People might love Italian, how it sounds, or they may hate it. And that's okay. That doesn't mean they hate Italian people. I made a flippant joke about the accent using a catchphrase uh, in a front to human dignity, which I've used, as I've said before, to describe the Beatles, U2, Bruce Springsteen, Hillary Clinton singing car, car uh, karaoke on uh, that, that late show. Uh, you know, if my wife makes a bad meal, I say that this meal is an affront to human dignity. So it's part of a running gag. It, there was nothing that was meant. There was nothing there. I mean, literally nothing. And yet to see the level of hatred that I received, those were real people who really wanted me out of Quebec, kicked back to the Middle East, who really wanted me fired, a 30-year professor. Is that is that a good, healthy way to live life? Right? Uh, when we were walking around today, my wife was saying, oh, you know, I hope that you don't get one of these crazy folks coming up to you now on the street. Is this what should be happening in the 21st century? A guy makes a joke in Texas about an accent that's 4,000 miles away. And now the wife is asking, oh, is it, is it going to be safe for us to walk out? That's not a prescription for a healthy, secure, anti-fragile society. So anyways, a lot of stuff has happened the past month. Hopefully, uh, much of it is now blown away past us which speaks again to something that I discuss in the book, which is be anti-fragile. Believe me, it wasn't tough to, to see, you know, the, the Minister of Justice of Quebec, the I think it was the Minister of Education or Science, all weighing in against me. As if, you know, I was, you know, I had caught, I had been caught, you know, selling national secrets to an enemy state. I made a joke with Joe Rogan on the local accent, which... Quebecers themselves will make about their accents, with the French will make about Quebecers, which all kinds of people make fun of all sorts of accents. People make fun of the the way the Lebanese speak French, where at least the, the very old school Lebanese, they roll their R. Je regarde, 
right? The R is rolled. It's heavy. It's like a Middle Eastern R. People make fun of that. So what? Laugh and move on. We got to get rid of this guy. I will never send my child to Concordia with that racist monster. Really? You're telling me I'm racist because I made a joke about an accent? I'm fully francophone? Oui, je parle le français couramment. Oui, j'ai appris à parler le français avant que j'ai appris l'anglais. You're going to call me a hater of French culture? It's unbelievable. What a... If anything, it is disappointing to see that in a so-called inclusive society, people can very, very quickly show their hatred of immigrants, their hatred of people from the Middle East, their hatred of Jews. And this is for someone who's been living here since 1975. So apparently I haven't yet gotten the street creds of having lived long enough to be able to make fun as a Quebecer of the Quebecer accent. Not good people. That's not the way we want to live life. I was disappointed that not uh, that there weren't more uh, folks who, you know, high profile folks who, you know, weighed in on the matter. Because again, it's the, the issue is trivial. The, the the local accent joke is, but it's it captures something. It's a, imagine if I had been in an emotionally fragile state. Imagine if I was going through a rough period of my life, where receiving such a gigantic blowback a tsunami of blowback, of hate, insults, threats, ministers, politicians, television shows, newspapers, all weighing in about me making a joke, uh, about an accent. Imagine if that would have pushed me over the edge. Wouldn't that have been tragic? Luckily, I have a strong personhood. I've got a strong family. I know who I am. I know what I stand for. And therefore, I can go like this and let it blow by. But that's not how we wish to organize society because not everybody is, has a strong personhood. The 14-year-old who's being bullied doesn't have that strong personhood. The 60-year-old principal who killed himself because he dared question some of these diversity, inclusion, and equity that tenets that said that Canada is an endemically white supremacist society he said, wait a minute, no, we're not. And because of that, he received so much hate that he ended up committing suicide. That's not how we want to live in a free society. You don't like my French Canadian joke? You go, I don't give a damn what this guy said on Joe Rogan. Who cares? I'm going to speak the way I speak. F him. That's what a healthy person does. They don't contact my university to try to get me fired from a 30-year career, which, of course, would have been insane to try to actually do. But the fact that they felt that reflex suggests that it's not a good thing. And speaking of these kind of free speech issues and so on and, and an anti-fragile society, uh, I haven't read yet the, the details, but my good friend Jordan Peterson just had, I think, a, a court case that, that ruled that... Uh, I, I don't want to misspeak because I haven't read it, but I think from what I understood that that they, you know, that the Ontario uh, uh, Board of Psychologists could force him to you know, take social media training because of some of his tweets that were offensive, right? A free society does not cause professional orders to train their members how to be more inclusive on social media. In a free society, you recognize that people will say things that you don't like, in which case you turn the channel, you unfollow them, you ignore them, you offer a countering position. That's what you do in a free society. Again, the reflex has been with us throughout all of eternity, which is if I am in power and you say something that I don't like, I will get rid of you. The only thing that's happening that's different in the West now is that getting rid of you doesn't imply that I imprison you or kill you, as has been the case throughout of human history. What you now do is you cyber bully, you harass, you intimidate, you contact the employer of the person, you put endless amount of pressure to destroy a person's life. Well, you're not going to destroy this guy's life because I am a honey badger and I will fight you till the end because these are the principles that we cannot lose. It can't be the case that we live in a society where a professor with my record, with my 
sense of dignity and honor, who, who doesn't have a bad bone in my body, right? I mean, I love Quebec. I love Quebec society. I'm, I'm still in Quebec in part because my family and my wife's family are here because we've grown up here. Yes, I don't like the Joal accent. Uh, let me repeat it. I find it very unattractive, but so do millions of people. And saying so does not make me Himmler. And speaking about the issue doesn't make me a victim because a lot of people said, oh, enough Jew would you are now you're playing the victim. Receiving hundreds of death threats and insults and is not me playing victim. It's me documenting what happens to someone in today's reality where they say something that someone finds offensive, right? In some places in the Middle East, you draw a an image of a prophet and it's off with your head. Well, what happened here? I made a joke about an accent. Well, it's off with his metaphorical head. That's not a good way to live. And honorable people who are watching this should be thinking about contacting my university or writing an article and saying, hey, this cannot be tolerated. Someone of Gatsad's stature who should not be, uh, well, not, it, I shouldn't say someone of Gatsad's stature, anybody. It could be a, a graduate student. It could be a, a, a janitor working at the university should not be held to a standard whereby if they make a joke somewhere, let alone outside of their professional role, then there could be a mob of people who come and occupationally harass you. I mean, frankly, I think that that should be uh, a criminal offense, right? Because if imagine if all of us were able, every single time someone says something anywhere that we don't like, we then start a mob to get that person fired. I don't support that. It's grotesque. It's immoral. It lacks dignity. It's fragile. It's insecure. It's grotesque. There you have it, folks. But notwithstanding these difficult moments, I retained my smile. I had a fantastic time in California. California is such a beautiful place, notwithstanding some of the, the difficult political ideologies that run through the veins of much of California. Uh, the sun was not always there, by the way. Uh, for the first time ever, uh, you know, we had a bit of rain, which, you know, the old song, It Never Rains in Southern California, apparently needs to be revised. It's, it, it rarely rains in Southern California. So there you have it, folks. The sad truth about happiness is doing quite well. Please let help me keep the momentum going. As I said, order a copy. It's, it's a really, it's a fun book. It's not about all this parasitic stuff it's it's positive it's optimistic it's happy it's joyful uh, i think if you give it a chance and read it you'll you'll enjoy it uh, to those of you who are going back to school i do have many uh, viewers who are students best of luck in the new semester it's about to start uh, looking forward to meeting a new group of students it's always exciting when i first meet a new batch of students and i introduce them to you know consumer psychology and evolutionary psychology and psychology of decision making to see how their worldviews are uh, certainly changed by some of these some of this material that they've never seen or heard of before so that's always exciting that's what keeps uh, my teaching always fun and and you know engaging and there you have it have a great end of summer don't let people bully you always be nice and kind as a default value but if people come after you, wrongly so, be a honey badger. Never capitulate. Cheers, everybody.